Yo, what's up guys? This is Trent with another Demon Hunter guide, but this time it's for BFA. Um, I got a lot of questions on my stream about um, how is Demon Hunter right now in its, in, in its current state because lots of things have changed. And um, I've been practicing around for like a month now. I've been playing pretty actively and I can guys tell you now, like what are the best talents, what are the best uh, gear stats, what are the best honor talents, what are the best Ezra traits. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm gonna put like a time scheme so you can see everything when is what and um, yeah I guess hope you guys enjoy the, enjoy the guide so let's start off with um, what are the best stats for demon hunter right so as number one it's still agility agility is mostly important for demon hunters um, back in legion critical strike was always the second one but that's not the case anymore um, we have haste and versatility they are both number one I actually prefer to take haste over uh, versatility because I want to get around 20% haste before I really start focusing on verse uh, so let's say first is agility then haste then versatility then it's crit and then it's mastery so you want to kind of build in that order when haste is around 20% start focusing more on versatility and then get your crit and then you get your mastery up um, so yeah that's that for stats and let's get back let's let's head to the talent section so a lot of people they asked me trend do you still play with demonic appetite because i used to play that a lot uh, back in legion it was kind of my go-to uh talent because it went so it, it worked so well with here it is it used to work so well with feast on souls it used to reduce the cooldown of i beam and kills over by five seconds um, but that's not the case anymore they removed that trait completely and it, it's pretty useless now you know um you can use it in combination or with Eyes of Rage, but I tried this. I tried this trade out on beta, and I really didn't feel like it was worth it. It only reduces by 0.7 seconds. If you do it times three, it's gonna be 2.1 seconds off your I beam. Um, it still feels very weak. I think it could work if this gets like buffed to like three, four seconds. It could be good uh, to actually play with the Morning Appetite. But till then, I'm just gonna play with Fellblade. And the reason why I play with Fellblade is you can use it as a gap closer. Um, it also gives you fury obviously and it does fire damage. It does not do chaos damage, it literally does fire damage which means if a target gets blessing of protection you can still use Fellblade to kill the target. That is really good. So you can basically use Fellblade, you can still I-beam to kill a target when he has Bob. I really like Fellblade because of the gap closer and because of the fury generation. If if that trade, I mean the Scott the Azerite thing gets buffed, you can consider taking the Demonic Appetite, but until then, it's pretty crap for me. So then we get to the second row, Insatiable Hunger. This is an ability I never ever pick. Uh, then comes Demon Blades and then Immolation Aura. And the only time I see myself pick Immolation Aura is when I play the Dark Slash build. Well, I'm gonna explain you guys that later. But for this build, kind of the Blade Dance kind of build, and high damage, high single target damage, and consistent pressure, we go with the de Demon Blades. And you kind of want to never ever use Demon's Bite as a Demon Hunter. As you want to use, use it as little as possible. And you kind of want to use all your globals for imprisoning, um, fell rushing, throw glaving to slow them, you know, to stun. Like, we, you don't want to waste your globals on gaining fury. You kind of want to get that for passively, as a passive income through momentum, maybe through undying hatred, through solitude, because you know you get more fury generation from that. That's how you kind of want to focus up uh, to get your fury. So then we get Trail of Rune, Fell Mastery, and Fell Barrage. I always play Trail of Rune. I don't find any of these two uh, viable. Fell Barrage is, you know, lots of people try to play it, but I mean, unless you are like, you know, uh, some. <laughs> Unless you you play around 2k, you can you can play Fabrage like around lower brackets because people don't really um, they're not aware of the ability, right? But it's literally a three second channel cast. It, it takes so long, and it's only eight yards, so you're literally in range of every single kick in the game. You're stunnable, fearable. It's just a horrible ability to me, and I don't like it. Trail of Rune works very well with first blood together and the revolving blade spec, so I always go Trail of Rune. Let's just change that. Okay, 
So then we come to the defensive tree, and that's Netherwalk, Desperate Instincts, and Soul Running. I never play Desperate Instincts, and the reason why is it can auto automatically proc when you're on the 35% health. And, you know, let's say you're playing with a Wrestle Druid and he Iron Barks you, and you drop below 35% health, your Blur is also gonna get procced. So then you use like basically two defensive abilities in one go, and, and that's just tried, like that's horrible. If that happens, you basically lost the game in the next go, so I don't, I don't like to play that. I like to play Netherwalk, 90% of the time you see me pick Netherwalk. And I might take Soul Running sometimes, um, if I play against a Rotcleave. So let's say I play against a Shadow Priest, Affliction Warlock, I'll take Soul Running and Demonic to get like passive leech, to get like passive uh, health income. And that is actually really powerful. And that's the only time I play Demonic as well. If I would play with Soul Running and Demonic, I was these two go hand in hand. I'll still play play with Trail of Rune and First Blood. Um, and Fell Blade and Deblades. Everything's the same, only Soul Running and Demonic. And you'll see most of the time I do like 30% of the healing of my healer uh, when I play this build and it's only useful against combs that rot you down so let's say you play against RMP you don't want to play soul running and demonic because they're very bursty you want to play netherwalk then um, so that's about this row then you come to this special kind of row it's first blood or dark slash Sack of hatred something I haven't really played around with it doesn't look worth it either for PvP I think it's good for PvE maybe in a later stage it will become good but now it's pretty bad um, but yeah, Trail of Ruin and First Blood, they work so well together, it kind of buffs it as well. And, you know, it reduces the the Fury cost and you can just spam it constantly, it doesn't cost any any freaking Fury, so... You should go First Blood in combination of Trail of Ruin. And then you have Dark Slash, and it's a new ability and people kind of... People... I was very, like, you know, intrigued by this ability, I thought it was really good. Um, but I felt... It was a bit disappointing, right? Let, let's say I would play this build and I would take Dark Slash. It would not work because I will not have enough Fury generation in that 8 seconds. You kind of want to... Like people ask me, Yo Trent, can you play Dark Slash in combination with Demonic? Because people think, yeah, if you go Demonic, you're gonna go Annihilation. Dark Slash is gonna be huge, it's gonna be insane. I don't think so. I only think that you can play Dark Slash is in combination with Emulation Aura. And... I see this ability, like, you know, this build, I see it as a passive fury income build. And what I'm trying to say with that is Emulation Hour will give you 80 fury over 10 seconds. And you're getting... Oh no, actually, let's say you don't have Solitude, right? So 80 fury over 10 seconds and 80 fury over 10 seconds when you venture retreat. So ideally, you want to Emulation Aura, right? And then you venture retreat, so you get both fury incomes right now i don't get it from veggie retreat but then you fell rush in you want a dark slash and then you want a kill strike for eight seconds straight that is the only way that this ability is worth it if you can actually get every single global a kill strike out if you don't if you play with demonic you're gonna get fury starved like in between you're gonna have to demons bite to gain fury and use a dark slash again that is not worth it you only want to use this build if you can only kill strike if that makes any sense I haven't really tried or experimented much with this build. I think it could be good with like Maybe with like a rogue or something if we play with a rogue or like a windwalker someone that has very um, Short cooldowns so you can swap every 20 seconds and by the way, this is 26 cooldown 26 26 seconds cooldown When you retreat has 20 second cooldown dark slash has 20 second cooldown. So you can combine those two abilities very well with each other and Demonic has a 30 second cooldown. It's a bit longer, you know? So basically if you want to I-beam all the time, you're gonna be you're gonna have to wait 10 seconds again for Dark Slash, which is not worth it. But yeah, you can you you guys can experiment with a Dark Slash, but I would advise to play with Emulation Aura and Momentum if you want to play Dark Slash. And not like this. Not with Emulation Aura, Dark Slash and Demonic. That's not worth it. So yeah, for this spec, my favorite spec, we go with first blood. Then we go to the next row, and uh, it's either Master of the Glaive or Fell Eruption, and this all depends on who are you playing with. If you're playing with a warrior that has Slow himself, or a Windwalker who has Hamstring as well, you can play with Fell Eruption. Um, but if you li literally need to peel for your team, if you if you play with a Warlock that cannot move, 
Um, you want to play with with a slow. Slow is so important. It's even more important than a stun. Even if you can make ghosts, it doesn't matter. You need to have a slow. If you're Warlock or if you're Boomy or if you're Mage, anyone that doesn't have slow, if he needs any pills, you will play with slow. That's like a general rule. And then in the end, we come with Momentum or Demonic. So Momentum is just super strong right now, basically because you know the Avenger Retreat gives you passive fury income. And Fell Rush increase your damage by 15 seconds. I be I mean by 15% for six seconds. And note, guys, if you use Fell Rush twice now, it will actually stick up to 10 seconds. That is something that is new too. Before it used to be just be you know three seconds. If you would Fell Rush again, it would just be three seconds again. But now it basically stacks up. So momentum is really really powerful because of Edge Retreat. And the only time I you see me pick demonic is if it's against a dot cleave. And I can play soul rending, so that's a guy. That's like a nice thing to remember, right? If you play, if you're able to play soul rending, play demonic. If not, you play momentum netherwalk. It's pretty simple. So then we get to the um, honor talents. As a demon hunter, only trinket. You never play relentless or adapt. If you do, you're a donkey. You want to play trinket only, and nothing else works. Otherwise, you're gonna die. Rain from above. It's, it used to be a crappy ability, right, damage-wise in Legion, but now it, it, it pumps. Rain from above does so much fucking damage. I think it does 10k each Phalanx, and I think it's percentage on, like, health-based. Um, most of the time you'll see this be your, like, you know, your top damage ability if you use it on cooldown. But the way I want to use it is I kind of use it to get out of Root, out of Frost Nova, and still stay, stay offensive. Um, you can also use it to prevent ghosts, so if you see that your healer gets blinded and you know that, you know, the rogue is gonna kidney shot you, you wanna psh, fly in the air and just Dragon Ball Z that bitch, you know, from from upstairs. So, I always played Rain from Above, this is tier 1. I always play Demonic Origins tier 1, still pretty much the same. And the only talent you'll be changing is Solitude, right? So, if you need a defensive, like a dispel, you will change your solitude. If you need uh, your darkness, you will change your solitude. You don't want to change much of these two. Um, you could, like if it's really, really, like if you have to play super defensive, you can play reverse magic and darkness. Um, but I felt, rain from above, why not, you know? It's a defensive for me as well. I use it defensively and not only offensively, so I'm basically only changing my solitude. Okay. All right, so let's over to the Azra traits. So what I prefer right now is the Blade Dance. This is the Revolving Blades uh, trait. After Unbound Chaos got nerfed, um, I used to have Unbound Chaos spec like this. I used to have, I think, triple Unbound, Unbound Chaos, but that that spec got nerfed to the ground. It's really useless right now. And the only viable way to play this is with Blade Dance. Um, you know, again, it works very well with Trail of Rune. It does a lot more damage than Unbound Chaos single targetly. So, if let's say you're playing twos or you're training a healer, Revolving Blades will always be better. Even when Unbound Chaos was really good, like when it was pre nerfed, I would still play with Revolving Blades when I would train a healer solo. Unbound Chaos was good in AoE, but Revolving Blades is really good in single target, but it does a shit ton of damage as well in AoE. So. Go with Revolving Blades, try to get it triple stacked, and uh, I'm sure you guys will bang. So yeah guys, that's it. I think I covered most points. Um, I have a whole detailed guide on Wowhead, I'll show you guys here in a second how it looks like. I'll also put a link in the description if you guys want to read about it. Also if you have more questions, you guys can come on my Twitch. Uh, you can send me a message there or just catch me when I'm live. Follow me, you'll get an email when I go live. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a lot from it. And I'm just gonna tell you guys, Team Hunter is in a good state. Um, I'm really excited to actually play on Wednesday and uh, you know push some rating. And I hope you guys will tune in and see if you like it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next guide. Peace.
was I'm here and I'm feeling fearless Exaggerated, that's what you assume The story's over now, I must conclude I am conflicted, watching where I step still Hanging in the balance, not the life I want to live I want to take it all, standing tall Fear I'm the person you are